Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the Eritrean invasion of the Tigray region and the civil war in the former state of Ethiopia. So today, uh, not a lot has changed, obviously, since my uh, very brief update from last night, just to reiterate that uh, Eritrean forces uh, be loyalist forces that have positioned themselves within the vicinity of Abala uh, have not taken the Makele Airport at this locale along just off the uh, the A2 highway uh, just to the east, southeast of the uh, Tigrayan capital of uh, Makele. So again, we do believe there are Eritrean, a B loyalist, a far regional forces operating in Abala. We believe some of those some of those forces have crossed into the Tigray region, but are having difficulty in maintaining a operational advance over these very very rugged terrain features. If we kind of go and we look at Abala, okay, and then we move in a westerly direction towards Makele or the Makele airport you will kind of see the challenge first Abala is not a very large town not a lot of infrastructure to host a very large sizable force that would be needed to move west towards Makele and if you look around the Afar region again the infrastructure is just not there and uh, it, it would take the Eritrean military some distance to maintain its force construct near Abala. If, if we just kind of look at what we're what we're seeing here this is very rugged very harsh terrain so again as we uh, as we zoom in on Abala and then we move towards the west you can see it's uh, basically straight up a mountain, and this continues for some time with with many switchbacks. Now, the 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 big issue uh, for the uh, the Tigray Defense Forces is uh, is lack of vegetation, and that would make it uh, much easier for. A B loyalist drones, if they are operating Barakhtar TB2s or Chinese-made uh, wing loon drones, to uh, s to identify targets on the ground and attack those targets, even with uh, dumb bombs from uh, tat uh, fixed wing uh, tactical air assets as well. But you can see here the uh, fighting positions that have been in place for some time on the top of this uh, of this major terrain feature. And obviously, the uh, Eritrean army will be shelling these fighting positions. So you can see the dugout trenches. You can see the individual fighting positions around or just below the top of this major terrain feature. Again, the fighting positions. Kind of interesting to uh, to look at that, <clears throat> and then obviously it it continues, and there are multiple lines of uh, defensive lines by the Tigrayan defense forces, not just prepared uh, defenses that we just we just viewed, but uh, actual rapid reaction mobile groups that uh, have the ability to attack convoys and such from their rear as well. So again, not not an easy proposition. I know that it, it looks like it's obviously fairly close to Makele, but uh, this area has been uh, fairly well protected. And again, maintaining the uh, the uh, the logistical force to maintain an offensive operation in this direction uh, towards uh, the Makele Airport is is just not that uh, not that easy. Uh, additionally, if we go up to the north, uh, at this point, uh, I believe that uh, that Adagrat is uh, disputed. 
I believe there is Eatrian army units in Adigrat, but surrounding Adigrat and even inside of Adigrat, uh, we believe there are significant Tigrayan defense forces still operating against the Eatrian army and make it making it very very difficult for them to rapidly move down the A2 highway towards Makele. Additionally, in Adwa, same scenario. Yes, the Eatrian army is present along the B30 highway. They are present in some locales in Adwa. But in the areas that they do not have actual boots on the ground, there are Tigrayan defense forces uh, basically in a 360 degree direction around these Eatrian forces. And just as we had talked about last night about the ambush of a fairly long convoy of uh, Eatrian forces that were moving south, and again that convoy to our understanding was completely annihilated by Tigrayan defense forces. This convoy included tanks, although a limited amount of tanks, two tanks, probably uh, doing escort duty or being transported, we're not sure at this point, with about uh, uh, 40 plus trucks with accompanying uh, field artillery pieces as well. And to our understanding, all of that equipment was either destroyed or captured along with the troops that were accompanying that force as well. And uh, what we're hearing is those attacks or attacks like that are taking place daily along the B-30 highway and routes into Eatria. And obviously that has the Eatrian general staff very concerned about its ability to maintain control of this massive amount of territory that they've moved into. A massive amount of territory in which there is still an opposing force operating to the north to, to the south of the areas that they have taken. Again, Shire, Wickrow, Axum, Adwa. But again, to the north and to the south, to grind defense forces. Very precarious situation for the Eatrian army. Yes, they can take a town. They have the heavy weapons, they have enough forces to do that, but maintaining this occupation in the north is going to be very challenging, much less rapidly moving south and seizing the capital, Akele. And there's all kinds of wild rumors flying around, and unfortunately, yesterday, uh, because of some of this information com coming in, we reported that there was fighting near the, uh, the Makele airport, when in reality, again, it was, uh, in all likelihood, artillery being fired from Obala, landing a few miles away from McKelly Airport. And yes, I, I know that is not the name. It is not McKelly Airport. It is the Alula, Alula Nega Airport. So that's kind of where we set for today. Uh, obviously, we will continue to monitor, report, and bring you more content as we uh, get the information. A special shout out to the Smoky Hill Committee for uh, updating me with some information. Uh, please uh, keep uh, sending me information. It, it greatly helps me uh, put uh, two and two together and uh, really kind of it helps me analyze the situation and what we're seeing on the ground. So any information at all, feel free to send it to me. And I look forward to that information coming as well. So again, that's all we have for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. And as always, have a good day.